Gay Programming. Welcome to Gay Programming, <laughs> another episode of the greatest podcast of all time. Uh, here again is Marcy, aka Femme Marks, greatest lyricist on the mic you'll ever find. And I'm joined, as always, by my lovely boyfriend, Merlin Kirby. Yeah, everyone boo him. I'm adding boo sound effects to <laughs> you right now. Introduce yourself. So, how you doing? Tired, good. How are you doing? Ah, uh, well, it's another sunny, beautiful spring day here in Portland, Oregon, and uh, I'm living. I'm living my best life. Uh, we had a nice little poetry park. Uh, well, I call it poetry park. It was a nice little outdoor poetry reading that we had with a few people who managed to come. Uh, it was really short this round. I'm hoping to make them. A little bit more longer and a little bit more uh, filled out in the future. But all the same, I'm really happy with uh, the people who did show up and we shared plenty of poems. And the people who did uh, seemed to have a really great time, and including myself. So yeah, that was really great. And yeah, we just got back from uh, having a lovely double date with a, a, a cool couple of trans cats I know. So yeah, it's been it's been a pretty good weekend all around. I can't complain. I'm living I'm living a great life. That's good. Yeah. So this episode, this grand old episode nine of the podcast is going to be about tick 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 tick. I'm waiting for you to fill in the air because I don't know what this mm. podcast episode is going to be about. Uh, well, I mean, we can always go with our tried and true Ron DeSantis rant because oh, uh, I know recently he passed a bill that is literally just called Stop Woke Act. Yeah. And which is pretty fucking cool. I think that's what, what do you think that's going to entail? Nothing good. Is Did you see that guy petitioning to uh, ban the Bible, though? Petitioning to ban the Bible from, like, hotel rooms? No, like, um, ban any, like, teaching or talking of it in schools um because technically according to a lot of their you know don't say gay and stop woke shit the bible contains uh concepts that are not appropriate to uh school age children such as rape incest uh and according to them homosexuality even so technically the bible should not be um allowed either which is just someone like uh against the whole bullshit that they're doing being like okay well your own book has a lot of this bullshit so uh yeah it's probably a really cool democrat in florida going like now they'll have to see it my way (laughs) they're really gonna get uh their pussies in a knot when they see this and like ron DeSantis. Doesn't even look at the news because he doesn't do anything other than wake up and say something stupid in front of all the people taking pictures at him. I think it's kind of funny. I don't know. I mean, oh, I think it's funny, but yeah. you know, it's clearly like I see them just like thinking, like, I'm so smart. I'm so fucking smart. I mean, just like anything to like waste their time and irk them even a little bit. And I'm like, that's good. Keep it up. Uh, if you really want to piss off Ron DeSantis, um, you can just go to his house and just bang on the door at all hours of the day. Just like constantly, like not as an individual, because you know, they'll eventually arrest you, I'm sure, for harassment. But if we as a collective organized uh, unit of uh, insurgents going up to Ron DeSantis' door and making silly faces in front of his Amazon uh, doorbell. Um, I'm pretty sure I actually did go to a sit-in at his mansion once. Was his mansion pretty? You know, like the McMansions near the beach? Just bigger. Just, Just more of that. Uh, I, I'm surprised he has a mansion. That's kind of, uh, I don't even really know much about Ron DeSantis before he became governor of, uh, Florida. I mean, I would assume he was probably just some fucking lawyer cunt. The guy, uh, the only thing I really knew about him was that he was like, when he was running for governor in Florida, like literally all of his ads were just like mad sucking, <laughs> like Donald Trump's dick, where literally it would just be an ad of like, 
him sitting uh, with his children reading a, a children's book where it's like, Donald Trump's How to Build the Wall. Uh, well, here, here's some photos of uh, his home. Let me see his uh, cool... It looks like a plantation. <laughs> looks like a straight up like historical site plantation. I think I even see cotton growing. No, those are lilies. But yeah. they do kind of look like cotton. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty palatious fucking estate. Yeah. He's, a uh, fucking living a night, living his best life. It's, it's really fucking sucks, though. I want to say that, like, clearly, like, you know, he, he clearly, him or his family has a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But they don't suit up the fucking place with anything that looks fucking cool. Mm-hmm. It looks like a shit fucking house. It looks like every other fucking shit house from florida where it's like designed by a racist monkey uh that has Um, no design sense because it was designed by a racist monkey yeah i mean pretty much (laughs) i mean i i just always want to say that like the my biggest credence with there being such a wealth divide in this country doesn't even come necessarily from the wealth divide itself it's just that the wealthy fucking don't know how to spend their fucking money They spend it on stupid junk where, like, Elon Musk will just, like, launch a car into space and then live stream it. And that's how he spends his money. If I had his fucking resources and money, I would be doing so much more interesting things. I would be holding the world's largest orgy demonstration in front of the White House because I can pay all the porn stars I've ever, like, seen on online to just fuck in front of the White House. That's what I would do. That's, like, right off the top of my head, and that's a billion times better than, like, Jeff Bezos' penis-shaped spacecraft. Man, I always think it's really funny how, uh, like, really unimpressive, like, my big dreams are, I think, sometimes. Uh, Just in the sense that people are like, okay, if you had a million dollars, what would you do? And I'm like... I don't know, man. Like, buy a used car in cash. I feel like that's most people's answers, though. I feel like most people don't really have, like, huge... And, you know, again, most people, when they do come across money, it is, like, those fucking, you know, when they win the lottery stories, Mm -hmm. where, like, literally they waste all their money because they bought, like, a car that could make chicken nuggets in the car. I remember my mom used to watch this show with me as a kid, and it was, like house hunters but specifically for people who won the lottery yeah oh yeah i know which one you're talking about i've seen that so many times but i've been waiting for the dentist that show is kick ass <laughs> i always remember it like, because i was like man you're gonna fucking run out like this is a finite amount of money you have here and you're like i'm gonna buy a big fuck you house and i'm like man just Like, the property tax alone will fuck them over. Like, Like by the end of the year, they will be evicted from that house. Yeah, and I'm just like, man, calm down. Put it in your bank. Fucking, I don't know. I mean, one part of me does say that, but, like, literally those people, when they get a shit ton of money, know exactly how to spend it. Like, they (laughs) they are the ones who... Because literally, like, you know, you you see these, like, fucking rich people who are literally, like, fucking, like, Scrooge McDuck, Mm. where they'll literally, like, wear fucking, like, tissue box, uh, like, things on their fucking shoes, never spend a dime, just, like, keep it fucking hoarding in their giant fucking vault. They won't even dive into it. They're not even that fun. They're literally, like, they just do nothing with it. But at least these, like, fucking jackasses where it's like... I got $100,000 from the, the Florida ball. And they fucking are like, well, I guess I'm going to make myself a bass guitar that's also got an AK-47 on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's weird, man. I mean, I guess, I guess I don't have much room to talk. I'd probably get more tattoos i don't know hey man again at least you know at least you're using the fucking money to like do something cool with it and not just like that's the end goal which is ultimately what i think a lot of these fucking like rich trust fund fucking bitch kids is like the only thing they've ever known in their fucking life is money and their bank account growing Mm -hmm. and that's the only thing they can ever like feel any kind of dopamine or feeling of success or rush or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, that. for me, like, I think I was like that at one point, especially when I got my first job. 
Uh, Hell yeah, me too, especially as an artist. Yeah. Well, yeah, especially too, like growing up below the poverty line, it was so crazy to actually have money and I wanted it to stay that way. But, um, you know, at the same time, I kind of went really far the other way too because I was like, this is the first time in my entire life I've ever, like, been able to spend $100 at once if I wanted to. Um, <laughs> so... I went out and would spend like 900 on like a tattoo. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, you know, I guess as with fucking everything, it's all about balance or whatever. And um, like, like people say, like with money, you know, it's like you can't take it with you. So use it while you're here. Well, yeah, I mean, like, because my, my thing is just like, what what are you hoarding it for? Mm-hmm. Like what? Like why why does why does anyone need a fucking billion dollars of assets of anything? Yeah. Like you know, just like of of not just like money, just like a you have three billion dollars worth of shit. You yeah. as a single individual own three billion dollars worth of something. That's like way too much fucking shit for one person. <laughs> I'm sorry. No one is that worthy to have that much fucking resources. Mm-hmm. And especially in the current circumstances where we literally, again, have people like dying on the fucking street with nothing. Nothing. And we're just like, well, you know, they didn't have an idea like Amazon, so I guess they deserve to die. Oh, yeah. They're and just... I mean, yeah, especially when it's like... I agree that when it's, like, assets, it's just complete, utter bullshit. Because it's like, oh, well, ev- like, the world is fucking on fire, but good thing that I own, like, five sports cars. That'll come in handy in a pinch. And, like, yeah, you could sell them in a pinch, but not if everyone around you is too poor to buy them. Like, it's just... Did I ever tell you this story that, uh, cause you know, I'm, I'm fucking, my, my brain is like just a swamp. It's just the fucking Black Lagoon. Sure. Um, I don't get any pleasure from normal things anymore. I have to get the real good stuff. And one particular really good stuff that I found was like a, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but it's, it's, it's like the thing where like all the investors of a company, like everyone who owns like some kind of share of stock, like goes to a meeting and the CEO or whatever like says like this is how the company is doing and here's meeting kind of but it's 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 not really a board of investors but it's more like it's more like those events where they like it's kind of like a public event expressing not just to the investors but everyone who's really involved in the company and also like for potential investors like here's how Mm. our company's going yeah and uh like I want to say like a year ago the the Daily Beast did like a short little story on this, I think. Uh, but uh, there was Rolls Royce uh, did who is the car manufacturer. Yeah. Where they were like, oh, actually, COVID has been great for oh. us. Yeah, I think yeah. I've told you this, but like, COVID's actually been great for us because now everyone is buying Rolls Royces like crazy. Uh, because they see everyone around them dying and that makes them want to live life better. And basically like this fucking shit eating millionaire, like I don't think he's a billionaire, but this like very rich fucking guy who's in charge of one of the most prestigious car manufacturing, uh, business of all time. Like saying not just to investors, but like basically to the public at large, because you know, Mm. you can just find this anywhere. Anyone can. Just basically saying, like, yeah, the fact that everyone is dying and everything is shit has been super awesome for us. And we're not supposed to be like, oh, this this person isn't a bloodsucker mm-hmm. who's, like, literally the antithesis of evil. We're just supposed to look at that and be like, what a smart businessman. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> that's the bizarreness of it and that weird, like culture around being like oh well life isn't fair it's ruthless and cutthroat and i'm like it has no reason to be that way though yeah you made it that way yeah you made it into like and it always like gets into that point where it's just like well hey man like the lion has to feast on the gazelle like they everyone's a poet in my opinion everyone has to like have their own justifications uh but everyone's most people are really bad poets <laughs> Uh, and there's a lot of like business major fucking shitheads who literally their, their image of themselves 
is that inspirational uh, poster that you see in office buildings where it's just a black box mm. and on the inside of the black box is a fucking tiger and it says be what you are underneath yeah. like that's that's their fucking mind frame and that's how they justify their like lack of an anxiety or self-consciousness of them being like shitty people when they're like literally like repo repoing people's like possessions and like ruining people's fucking lives yeah no it's so bizarre and i think so much too and it comes back to a lot of like um you know rhetoric that i've talked about and stuff of how i you know don't support having any kind of currency at all and just my views on the world and people go crazy about like well you can't just do that because of like this part of the economy and like the housing market and what about like you know health care and whatever and i'm like all of the cons that you see are is just bullshit that people have made up like mm-hmm. if there's i've never heard like a pro-capitalist or anti-anarcho-communist or socialist argument that wasn't based in like just the made up bullshit that is 90% of like societal function today. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like none of it's real. None of it has any consequence other than the way we've perceived it, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, I do feel like especially in my time just around like political circles or people who just like discuss policy and like what that is They kind of do seem just like trapped that like everything that's around us, that's the only way. Capitalism is the only way. Market economies are the only way. Like democratic, liberal, um, like neoliberal order. That's that's the only fucking way that works. We're at the end of history. We don't need to find any other way. So like it's basically just like, you know, the only thing that anyone really fucking talks about is, like, adjustments. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, if we increase the minimum wage, or if we tie it to inflation, or if we had unions, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and, like, all these other things. And, you know, I'm and those even those situations that I brought up, some of those things are valid, and I do support them in that current in the current situation that we find ourselves in. But if we really want to talk about like revolutionary politics, if we really want to talk about like genuine revolutionary things, we have to get down to the basis of what these like material objects are and what they are being used to control people. Money is a way to control people. Money is a way to make people have some systemic order in the world Mm. and i do support having some kind of order in the world but i think that just like a zombie just assuming that money is the only way currency is the only way to imbue people with order and have a functioning society is fucking lunacy yeah it's fucking lunacy and it's honestly just fucking limiting yourself I mean, it's just getting you to, like, just, like, you'll, like, if we stick to that mind frame, there is no other way except death. Mm -hmm. Like, that's when the, you know, there's no way to coincide, uh, like, a market-based economy society and global warming. We we just can't fucking do that. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And if you still think there's, like, ways of negotiating but still having your McDonald's and also not having a global fucking economic catastrophe genocide, you're, I, you do not work in the same material world that everyone lives in. I'm sorry, you live in a fantasy world. Well, yeah, no, I mean, even, like, just the fashion industry alone is, like, fucking insane with the amount of textile waste and, like, contributions to global warming that it causes. Um, but people are like, no, I need seasonal fucking christmas sweaters in bulk that i'm gonna wear once and then throw out yeah and then they're gonna go into a landfill or get burnt or like no like there's very like you know even america's like recycling infrastructure is fucking laughable it's not even really like any kind of like like compared to some other countries that have like a lot better and more sophisticated recycling infrastructures such as japan is a really good example Mm. um like yeah america in particular is just like our way of running our our way of running society and dealing with the waste that living creates is 
non-existent. We just don't deal with it because again, our, our main mode of thinking is what's going to be profitable. Mm. Everything else that falls outside of that Venn diagram of a single circle saying profit fucking means nothing in a capitalist American society. Yeah, no. And like, it's really interesting because for me, like, you know, the first protest or like really anything like that of that nature that I ever went to was a climate strike. Um, and it was so interesting because for me getting into like, I don't know, I don't like to use labels like zero or low waste living. Low waste is better than zero. Uh, anyone who thinks you can live as a human person and be genuinely zero waste is like insane. everyone shits. Life creates waste. Yeah, like a beaver like... <laughs> is a fucking polluter. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, no, like, getting into low waste or, like, more environmentally conscious living uh, really kind of, like, skyrocketed me into so many other leftist stuff, too. Um, because you do get down to, like, the inherentness of um, the harm done by consumption. Like, we can have bamboo straws and reusable, like, Ziploc bags and everything all we want, but... At the end of the day, if people are still going out and buying, like, excessively packaged Christmas, like, fucking, I don't know, soap bottle bundles and then, like, wrapping them in this goddamn rubbery paper and everything, like, I don't know, just the culture around consumption and if that just continues the way it is, all of those other things are kind of useless. Yeah, I mean, also, too, that we do, like, in America especially, like, our economy, our mode of production is purely a consumer-oriented experience. So, we, what we do here basically just produces a shit ton of crap. So, you, you'll build, you, you essentially, okay, so you, you make a million dresses, okay? And you take all the material to make that million dresses. And you put them out on the rack stores. Guess what? Only 500 dresses got sold. What are you going to do with all the remaining, like, shit ton of dresses that you have? Uh, well, I guess we just burn them. We get rid of them. And that's yeah. what most people do. It happens with oil. It happens with food. Like, literally, when you actually look down at, like, just how much our, like, corporate mode of organization like this weird fucking libertarian nightmare that we find ourselves in america and just like how much like how it's just not even like productive mm -hmm. it's not it's not even like it's not even like doing like good numbers it's literally on every single level with the exception of the people at the very top of the pyramid making like six figure salaries and like every minute and whatever like Every other level is fucking waste. Every other level is fucking, like, not managed well to any ex extent. Other than, again, being profitable to the main people who are putting in. Yeah, no, I mean, it is such a bizarre, like, intense cultural thing. Because um, I remember even, like, again, uh, this was, I want to say, in the year 2019. Hmm. Um, but I you know, was looking at a lot of, like, anti-consumerism media and stuff like that. And, um, so actually, it was because I wasn't working at the time, and I was kind of out of money, um, but I wanted to, I guess, in a way, romanticize it in my own brain <laughs> to avoid the direness of the situation. Um, and so, you know, there's this, like, kind of trend of doing no by November, which basically means, and you know, people have done it like for an entire year, people do it for a week, but like whatever. Basically, outside of maybe like gas or groceries, or you can be as strict or as lenient on it as you want, but you don't buy anything is the idea. So I did no buy November. It yeah, was... it's like it's like the hippie version of no nut November. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was fucking hard, not even because of like my own, you know, ideas of like willpower or like whatever. Um, it was fucking hard because, like, my friends had birthdays and there was this social expectation that you have to buy them a physical item or, you know, like, your friends want to go out and eat and now you have to buy a meal at this chain and whatever. And it's like, 
so much of the like social aspects and everything is just so rooted in like spending money Mm -hmm. um it's really weird how like not often it is like people will hang out and not spend money um it's just weird how like intensely like burned into our skulls like the need to spend money is if you took someone out on a first date and like the idea was like you didn't you yeah. just walked around the park most people would be kind of pissed about that I know, right? most yeah. people would be like well you need to get yourself a better man because that one won't treat you right like yeah. they're they're broke like yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah i mean and also too i mean it's it's like is there how many days have people, with the exception when you just didn't have any money, mm-hmm. uh, like do you go through a day not spending any money whatsoever, like not even a nickel or whatever? Yeah, it's like it. You know, even the fucking ads that we consume, where like everything is like, you know, the the like the core tenet of marketing is to basically find people's weaknesses and Mm. then fucking exploit it in either like a soft way where they're like hey do you want to be beautiful like this beautiful model in the dove Mm -hmm. ad well then get our lotion uh or you know like the the hard version of that where it's like dudes like big trucks and chicks love fucking dudes with big trucks and if you want pussy, you better get yourself a Ford. Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely just like, you know, with people who, you know, like the common American who's always apparently so fucking afraid of propaganda and uh, ideologies taking hold of their brain and making them do things that they wouldn't necessarily want to do uh like uh, the dreaded communism mm-hmm. uh that they are a culture that is completely propagandized yeah like sure. completely hypnotized these fuckers are zombies they're fucking walking to the fucking chipotle and stuffing their fucking mouth breathing jaws with shit and yeah. they don't care they just don't care because mm-hmm. yeah i mean like why would you like what 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 around this, uh, the american society naturally inspires fucking anybody yeah no i mean like there's definitely and i think it kind of helped um to go through this period of like i don't know romanticizing like the random little things that you can do for yourself that aren't monetary i guess and i'm not saying like Oh, you inherently suck if you spend money. Like, no, like everyone likes. I'm saying that <laughs> if you fuck guys, if you spend another fucking dollar after yeah. you hear this podcast, you're fucking dead to me. Yeah, you are fucking dead. To- also, give me to my Patreon, but get yeah. I will fucking end you. Um, yeah, no, like even today at the thrift store, we both got a fun little shirt for ourselves, and like that's fine. Um, but like at the same time, uh. I don't know, learning that, like, you don't need to spend money to achieve that kind of joy. Because I remember a couple months ago, um, I was here, I think you were at work, uh, but we, like, it was the first time in a few months, because, you know, they're not always in season, but it was the first time in a few months that I was able to, like, cut up a pomegranate for myself and, like, spend time getting all the little seeds out into a bowl and then having that nice little snack for myself. And, like, yeah, obviously, you know, the pomegranate costs money and the knife used to cut it costs money and everything. But, like, um, I don't know, just spending time doing, like, a little labor of love for myself to give myself a yummy little pomegranate. Um, And I remember, like, feeling just so happy and so relieved about it. And, like, I think that's an example of... And I know it's difficult considering the state of the world and adding in mental illnesses and obviously i have my days where i'd be like yeah fuck the pomegranate i'm pissed off but like at the same time um i don't know just observing and looking for moments to like love yourself i guess and like be happy about the mundane of life yeah i mean on to like kind of building off on that i think there's a lot of times i've heard the the quote where it's like Oh, if we didn't have 
that profit incentive. If people didn't have that incentive that maybe if they come up with the next best thing that they could also be a little Mark Cuban who's a billionaire, uh, that no innovation, no art would be created. Uh, like there would just, you know, with like society as a whole yeah, no. would be the USSR and they, we would all be still peeling potatoes out in the back or whatever. Yeah. People have like such an inherent need to create. Yeah. And I feel like I, I agree with you. Absolutely. Where it's just like, it's, it's like, I feel like it, the complete opposite where like mm-hmm. profit tends to bring the worst out in people it makes people rush Mm -hmm. it makes people like get nervous and angsty and question themselves like especially like when it comes to like i feel like i've met so many talented artists who i feel like you know have a really like genuine uh craftsmanship to what they do but even besides that like i know when i see them make art that they have like a real close spiritual experience happen to them that like this is the way they can like cope with the world around them and like it makes them a better person it like through the creation of that and i've seen so many people like that give up everything give up all of their life all of like their aspirations because they felt that it was a waste of time because they couldn't make any money from it yeah. And that shit to me is like fucking disgusting because that's not what art should be about. It shouldn't be about making money. It shouldn't be about like, you know, chasing that just to, you know, to, you know, be well off and have a, a fucking insurance plan. This is about sharing something genuinely with your community and, you know, sharing yourself with it. And it should be beyond like the, the means of like fucking like, Oh, how do I make this profitable? How do I make this so uh, it's a fucking five, seven to seven days a week business, so I can eat, breathe, shit, and drink it? Uh, I just there, like there's just so many times I've seen that where it's just like it's it destroys everything around you. It does not like create anything fucking good out of it. Oh yeah, I mean there's that like grind hustle culture that says everything you do needs to be commodified. And it's just, like, the quickest way possible to suck the soul right out of your life. Especially now. Like, it's become so much of a thing that every part of yourself needs to be monetizable at this point. You know what I fucking saw on Instagram recently? Mm. A fucking ad for? There's a fucking ad. Because everything's fucking, like, share now. Is, uh, there's this app where you can basically rent out space in your like apartment or whatever your house that you don't use for people to like have as a storage space yeah i saw that a few years ago yeah like well i saw an ad for it recently and i'm just like and you know even here in portland there's like i don't know if it's elsewhere probably is i wouldn't be too surprised in other metropolitan areas but there's like now like a ride share car service like Mm -hmm. they just have cars that are just out on the street and you can, you know, download the app and you can hmm. ride, drive that car. And that's like a drive share and you stop and you pay and, you know, like all that shit, uh, is a part. And like, this is just more and more people like, I don't know. I think people see that and think like, Oh, what a freeing experience. It's awesome that now I have this opportunity just like out there. Mm -hmm. But the thing that they, I just don't think they're like fully getting is like the thing that really sucks about it is that this is owned by a company that is going, that like has no obligation to you whatsoever to any speak. So if something really goes wrong, it's really just you between what the government considers a human being for some fucking reason, which is actually a multi-billion dollar value company. Yeah. That has, like, that could fucking sue you into oblivion even if it was their fucking fault. you know we do well merlin really does it but uh i 
help distribute when I can. And uh, but yeah, Merlin's a very fantastic cook, uh, and he does a very lovely thing where basically he distributes out food when he can. Uh, originally, we were we work with an organization. What would can we say their name, or is that not cool? I don't know why we couldn't. Okay, so let's just say, yeah. Portland Mutual Aid Network. Um, they do distribution downtown on Wednesdays, I believe. That's kind of their bigger thing, but they're branching out. Pretty much me and one other person are uh, cooking meals for various uh, houseless camps or just people out on the street, um, you know, just trying to get hot meals going. Uh, so this weekend I made some, uh, lentil soup because the food is all vegan. Yeah. And we uh, were going to go to Laurelhurst Park, which is this park that, uh, we know in the area. Yeah. And that's where I held my poetry park thing. But we were also going to, before that, distribute food to some camps that we knew around there. Well, yeah. Um, and yeah, cause even, you know, like I was in the, the signal chat and uh, someone was like, oh, yeah, you can try Laurelhurst because, you know, there's usually some tents around there. And I literally remember driving by, like, this was yesterday, so, like, two or three days ago, and seeing just that whole back street lined with tents. And um, so we go, pretty much not a single fucking person. No tents, like... No, it's, like, barren. Like, yeah. it, it got fully sweet. And it had to have been, like, the night before that fucking morning or something. I I honestly, like, like, knowing probably the cops, they're probably, like, literally, like, the crack of dawn. Like, either, like, late at night, crack of dawn, like, under night, so no, like, no one's, like, recording it or anything. Yeah, um, so that sucked, and now I've got to go and find, like, a free fridge or something to put all this fucking soup in. Yeah, because their fridge is fucking jam-packed with some lentil soup. So if you're in the Portland area and you, you are a fan of lentil soup, oh boy do we know we got some for you. You yeah. can just come on by to our address. I believe in that Alex. I, I don't want you freaks knowing where we live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so that really pissed me off. Because it just, like, you know, there's so many barriers even to just trying to do mutual aid and good stuff for people. And I think it speaks to a grander point of, like, not only does the system obviously just shit on these people and put them in bad situations, but it also makes it so difficult for them to even access help and for the help to even be given. Because I was kind of, honestly, I was pissed, like, that it happened to them but also because i'm like man i get a very limited number of days off a week i have a very limited amount of money i buy fucking ingredients i spend like four hours making all this goddamn soup and now like it's it just sucks and i hate being that way because you know it's very bitter it's it's annoying yeah well it's just like you know it it shouldn't be such a inconvenience and I don't want to say burden, but it shouldn't be a hassle to just help your community. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean, but right down to it, it's just uh, the city doesn't view them as a part of the community. They view them as, like, fucking parasites that, yeah. like... You know, I just think that's just so interesting. It's just, like, because I know we over... Well, you overheard recently at work, like, a conversation. Yeah. Of, like, you know, and of... I, you didn't really tell me too much of what they said, but I'm assuming it was not too pretty conversation about the homeless situation in Portland. Rhetoric about like, oh, they're stealing stuff and they're doing drugs and just mm-hmm. like, fuck off, grow up. Like, yeah, but you're. It's fine when you abuse the like opioids in your in your fucking like kitchen sink or whatever. Like it's it's just like it's oh I I it's not only just like the double double standard of it where like. Yeah. You know, they have this weird mindset of thinking that they're better than them. Because, like, I live under a roof. I figured mm-hmm. it out, even though my mommy and daddy were homeowners. So, it's pretty statistically good that I will be a homeowner. But, yeah. you know, like, but they just think that they're, like, they I, dumbly may assume that they, for, like, started in the same situation. And even if they didn't start in the same situation, that shouldn't matter because... 
like everyone should have a base level of competency to get out of any situation yeah. i guess what they think but like besides that whole thing it's just like whenever i talk or overhear people when they're talking about homeless people and especially when they get really angry about them and how annoyed they are about homeless people uh and all that shit that you say mm -hmm. it's just like when they when they say somebody's got to do something we got to get them like off the street and like literally when you ask him it's like well how They're how do we do talking about free housing or like assistance programs it's like i don't know just get them out of my face well literally i i because i honestly believe if you really push these people and they didn't have like an understanding that just saying let's kill them is not you know a good moral thing that a good american should be saying uh but you know if we really push these people like like what would you have the cops do and really it just kind of comes down to push them in a push them in a like a shelter and they just think yeah. that's like a, a the end all be all, even though they have no understanding of what these like atrocious shelter situations usually oh, are, yeah, no. and like, how they they're would, like they purposefully sell, set up to be like antagonistic towards these people. Yeah, it's like it's basically like, but yeah, I mean they, they it's either that and they just don't assume, or I literally do think deep down in their big black hearts is like you yeah, just kill them. Just shoot them. Like, why, like, or buy them a t bus ticket to the next town over. Like, yeah, no, I mean, it's just, like, I don't know. You see this a lot with, like, minority or marginalized groups of, like, that, uh, you know, like, the whole model minority thing. I think that definitely applies to low income and especially homeless people as well. Because, you know, people are like, oh, well, what about homeless veterans? And I'm like, what about homeless addicts? What about homeless people? What about who... homeless people? Yeah. Fucking like, in general. Was... Yeah, like, I don't care what they were or what, like, it doesn't matter to me if you, like, served in the military and have a perfect record or if you, like, use hard drugs. You deserve a fucking roof over your head. And, like, the two are not morally mutually exclusive or, like, you know what I mean? Like, there's mm -hmm. just, there's, human people do not have to morally and objectively earn like safety mm -hmm. and i know it's really fucking hard to inspire any kind of sympathy out of people in america because you know we're all like fucking psychopaths uh, who were born by like waspy protestants but like literally here here's it here's i'm gonna appeal to your selfish narcissism if you don't have desperate people out on the street fighting to survive, guess who's more safe? Yeah. Everyone! Fucking is... I know, it's very fucking hard to consider. I know I sound like a like fucking Confucius breathing again in the world, preaching his genius. I, I know. It's fucking, it's fucking crazy, right? Yeah, it's weird. Like, that is one situation I've butted heads with people a lot in a leftist spaces of how I don't view any necessity for any kind of jail or prison or holding system of that nature um, because I truly deeply passionately fucking believe and I don't care who wants to say oh no the world's not all sunshine and rainbows because every fucking crime out there I feel is either related to like financial fucking being desperate mm -hmm. or severely untreated and neglected mental illness yeah i mean it's it's a vast majority and the few times where we have like outliers of just like you know crimes that are committed that are just like pure sadism or just pure well, like, like even it always comes from fucking rich fucks you well, see it from, that. like, Jeffrey fucking Epstein. You don't see it from fucking, like, normal people. Even that, though, because I think about it, and you're like, oh, well, what about the people who just suck and, like, I don't know, want to rape and kill people? I'm like, does that not sound like severe, untreated mental shit to you? Like, does that sound 
sane to you? Yeah, I mean, it's either insanity or some kind of mental disorder, or it could also be that they live in a society where they're, like, literally told by everyone around them that they're, like, the golden gods yeah, walking among like, them. it doesn't even have to be, like, you know, a disorder or illness necessarily. Like, sometimes people who are more or less perfectly sane just need to see a therapist regularly and then they don't and then they turn into that guy from fucking i don't know american psycho <laughs> like it's just... yeah i mean it's just like you know kind of what we were talking about before where it's just like you know no one fucking deserves that amount of fucking money like just yeah. that shit amount of wealth but like when you have that amount of wealth and you have that amount of power individually in society mm -hmm. that fucking alters you yeah that fucking changes your perception of everything that is around you mm -hmm. and uh when that does happen let me tell you it's they 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 don't go like well i guess i'm going to start doing good in the world they're not yeah. superman they're not fucking clark kent goody two-shoe scout uh clark kent no they're fucking they're fucking like literally like how can i build a rape machine in my yeah. spaceship. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just, like, this very bizarre, um... Because people are so, like, complacent with the system that we have, too. Um, I think it's really bizarre, like, with the prison system especially, just how heavily people vouch for it, um, when it doesn't work. <laughs> like... Mm. One, people are like, well, how are you going to, what are you going to do about crime with no police? And I'm like, police don't fucking prevent crime. They show up after it happens. Mm -hmm. um, but also, the way that the fucking prison, like, industrial complex is designed to have repeat offenders. Yeah. So that they go back and make them more money. Well, yeah, I mean, definitely, like, with the, the recent increase, like, you know, in the last few decades of just, like, the private prison system is, like, yeah. fucking, again, like, just, like, what? Ex excuse me? Like, we cannot have private investors and, like, entrepreneurs going, like, okay, so there's this problem called crime, mm -hmm. and I have a cool new idea that's gonna ruin, like, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If we have a fucking prison, that should be fully in, like outside of the of the realm of private interest that is not yeah that is not like <laughs> it's not something we we put on the stock market i'm fr i'm afraid not everything needs to be a business yeah not everything needs to be a entrepreneurship like we like the entrepreneurs i know this society really values them really really romanticizes them up in society but they are not the smartest group of people. They don't really, they're not really smart. I want to, like, period. So maybe we should give them less authority in shaping our society and our world because they got a great new idea from watching Shark Tank reviews. Mm -hmm. Not everything needs to be a business. Not every hobby you have needs to be a side hustle. Like, money does not need to be so centered in our lives. Maybe if we really want something... If you really want a better world, maybe, maybe, don't think, hey, I got a new alternative to toilet paper that <laughs> I think the world's going to love. Maybe, just for no reason other than just wanting to help people or make someone smile, go downstairs and talk to your mother or your father or your sister or just a random neighbor in your neighborhood. Just talk to someone. Just try to. And for no reason other than just a simple desire to have a pleasant experience with someone in your world, value that instead of a fucking dime. Thank you again for tuning in to another dope, fantastic episode of Gay Programming. As always, I am Marcy. I am also Fem Marks on Instagram. I was joined, as always, by my boyfriend, Merlin, who goes by Angsty Vegan on Instagram. Gay Programming as well has an Instagram that's just called Gay Programming. And we try, well, I try to upload this podcast every week now. Uh, so, yeah, you just tuned in to episode 9 of Gay Programming. We're going to do something special for episode 10. Yeah, I know. We're hitting the big old 10 -o. Whoop, whoop. We're going to Fire Island next time, <laughs> guys. We got a 
one-way plane ticket to Fire Island, and we got to suck dick to try and get back. It's going to be one hell of an episode, I got to tell you. So tune in when that pops up next week. And as always, I love you. See you next time. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.